Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 1, Episode 5. So in this episode, a lot of stuff happened, and there was a lot of action. However, for some bizarre reason, I'm not very pleased. Like, I am enjoying this series. It could be a bit more. It is underwhelming. It doesn't have that Star Wars, Lucas, magic, like, like that that feel you know what i'm saying but for the most part i am enjoying this simple like series however this episode is very underwhelming and the reason for that is that a lot of stuff happens but you feel underwhelmed or you feel like it wasn't necessarily earned because it's only been a couple of episodes and stuff and so there's a huge revelation which a lot of people guess it was pretty obvious and everything who this certain character was and you know and there was a lot of action but there wasn't really there was okay there was some lightsaber action which i was happy for because i love some lightsaber action but it wasn't a, from necessary from, it wasn't from kenobi and the other lightsaber action battle it was cool but it could have been cooler you know what i'm saying but it was nice to see and it was interesting like, whoa what are you gonna do next you know and so basically this is what happens the tracking devices on the little robot drone thing they're tracking it and then so the robot drone starts to act evil it goes into like an air duct and it keeps like messing up with the circuitry and all of a sudden the door um, closes and like you know some stuff starts going haywire then they scan and they see that some ships are on the way and about four hours away so they want to start evacuating the planet well they have to get the door open and stuff so they can get the ship out and stuff so you know the little space under the little air duct thing is like really small and everybody's so big so they're like we can't do this and blah 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 blah, blah. and so this is the part where it kind of bugged me a little bit now you know i love little princess leia she's like the show stealer and everything and so she walks up she's like Where's that air vent? And so she basically, she's gonna go up there and like fix it, right? And I'm just kind of like, okay. It was cute before in the last couple of episodes when you're so headstrong, but now it's just starting to get annoying. Like she really thinks she can go up there and fix the thing. And that's basically what she does. She goes up there, he tells her, hey, don't do this wire, do this wire. And she's basically just up there by herself, just like fixing on it. And I'm just like, you ain't that smart, girl. And not only that, but it's a call back to the Mandalorian, but the Mandalorian scene was a whole lot cuter and everything. This just got like irritating. So, so then, you know, the stormtroopers, there's tons of them. There gotta be at least 50, something like that. And, but the door is closed and they're trying to get in. So then Obi-Wan and Reva, they talk and he's trying to get through her. While this is going on, he's having flashbacks of how he trained Anakin. And at first I'm all like, oh, they must've just de-aged him. But I'm like, no, they're moving around too fast with the lightsabers and stuff training. And I'm just kind of like, it can't be like, you know, that, 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 um, CGI de aging thing. Basically what it is, is just them, maybe a little prosthetics on their face, probably some makeup, but you can tell they're older in that thing as they're fighting, which, you know, cause they couldn't do the, the, the aging thing because it would have been too hard cause they're moving around super fast with the lightsabers and stuff plus anakin was a little bit skinnier and scrawnier back then and now he's not <laughs> so you know and so that was a really cool battle and everything and it's nice how it plays into stuff so then obi-wan's talking to reva he's trying to like change her it doesn't work she tries to cut through like the door with the lightsabers and it's on the rebels are fighting um shooting at the um stormtroopers and the stormtroopers are shooting back now, this is the part that bugged me. Okay, you know there's like a running gag in Star Wars where stormtroopers can just shoot at you at point blank and they'll still miss you? That's basically what happens here, but on both sides. <laughs> Nobody's hitting nobody. You will see one random person get hit much later on, but when they're literally 20, 10, 15, 20 feet away, nobody's hitting nobody. 
And it's just kind of like, it's kind of like, can't nobody be that bad of a shot. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's laughable. And it's too annoying when they constantly do it. When they did in the Mandalorian in season one finale. That was funny with those stormtroopers. But here it's just, they're, they're playing this up for laughs and it's just a big joke. And I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but you know what I mean. And so then, okay, so Ice Cube's son's in this, right? I think his name was Shia um, Jr. He has a crossbow. And I'm like, why the world he has a crossbow for? And then he fires it and a laser comes out of it. I'm just like, what? It's an old fashioned crossbow. Why is a laser coming out of that? Now I remember in Rogue One, that dude had some kind of weird looking crossbow, but I'm pretty sure arrows came out. I can't really remember. But, you know, I guess it makes sense. I mean, if you have guns that shoot out lasers and swords that the blades are like lasers as well, or a pulse laser or whatever. So I guess it makes sense. <laughs> so, um, the huge battle's going on and then all of a sudden that one lady gets hit. I forget her name, but it doesn't really matter no more because she got hit. And so the fighting is going on and everybody's trying to get in the other room and close the door. And then that um, labor um, drone, he comes over and he lays on top of her to take the impact of the fire. She sees that her stomach is bleeding and she sacrifices herself with a bomb. And I'm just kind of like, why did you get rid of this character? One, I like the actress. Two, when she was in Luther, she died in season one. So she's always dying in the first season. I want to see her act more. I like her acting. Also, she was a cool character who was redeeming herself because she did some bad stuff in the past. And so her sacrificing herself is noble and everything. But the thing is, because it's only five episodes, I think we've only known her for like three probably or something like that. It's like her sacrifice is good and noble, but it'll be nice to see her do bad stuff in the past, like at least a flashback, and then see her redeem herself. Um, what made her want to redeem herself to her just telling us in that one episode, the third episode. And because we saw the good stuff she's done now, but you know, it's just <sighs> freaking Disney Plus, man. They're too short. You can't tell a successful drama show in six episodes. I've been saying that for the longest time. You just can't do that crap. And they think you can, but you can't. This is why their shows are lackluster. I'm getting tired of Disney Plus. I'm tired of losing $10 a month. I'm getting ready to, once I'm done with all my movies, done with, I'm going to like buzz through like a bunch of like shows, like older shows that I really want to watch that are up. Like, God, it's going to take long time because they had tons of seasons and tons of episodes but i'm just gonna blizz through them and whichever ones i don't get to finish i just don't finish i'm tired of having disney plus i just am plus i have to get netflix soon because some of my stuff is coming out so you know and i had to get hbo max again so you know and so it's just not the point of keeping hbo max if all these marvel shows are lackluster and these last two like star wars shows are lackluster as well because think about it when it comes to Disney Plus, people really only got it because, you know, they want to watch the older stuff. And they made a the guy from Marvel and Star Wars. Their other original series, do you ever hear anybody talk about those? I have never heard nobody talk about those shows. They get renewed, so somebody's watching it. But I bet you it's the kids and everything. So, where I'm at on this? Um... Oh, she's dead. So anyway. <laughs> and so it's the robot thing too. Obi-Wan is upset. Even though he's only known her for like three days. And she was supposed to be his love interest, but they just scrapped that idea. And I'm thinking to myself, why kill her off? Like, why not kill Ice Cube's son? His acting's not that great. Like, it really not. And he doesn't do nothing in the show but now he's supposed to take over as the new like i guess like rebel leader or something like that i don't know but it's like his acting's not that great and of course reva nothing against the actress but her acting's not that great but it's better than his and stuff and so now we're gonna get to her and everything so 
Obi-Wan is kind of like, you know, he has to stall and everything. So he's going to give himself up. He doesn't want to see no more people dying. Now, I got to say about Obi-Wan in this series, Obi-Wan doesn't feel like Obi-Wan. He's not giving no, like, cool speeches. He doesn't. The thing about Obi-Wan, he always sounded angelic and he always sounded philosophical. Here he doesn't. Now he's just a shell of his former self. And that's one thing Star Wars fans have been complaining when it comes to the OG characters. They're just a shell of their former selves and stuff. So anyway, he gives himself up. And he gives Ice Cube's son his lightsaber. And the dude's all like, dude, how are you supposed to fight without a weapon? Well, they do a flashback of that when he's training with Anakin. And he takes like his weapon and all this other stuff. And so I do like how they match that together. So he's talking to her and and you know the thing about her is kind of like that's underwhelming is why like why is she doing what she's doing why does she hate obi-wan so much why was she a former jedi to turn evil all of a sudden Cause we know the inquisitors are former jedi what turned her and everything so they're talking more and i can barely hear it and i don't feel like turning it up because i have tinnitus and everything and so basically he says something like he's not giving himself to Vader. He's giving her to Vader. Some crap like that. He's leading Vader to her. So he can sense something. So basically it's like this. He wants to know why she turned her back on like, you know, the good side of the forest and this and that. Basically it's like this. Anakin was the one who killed all her friends as little kids. She played dead so she can survive and everything. So this whole time, this entire time, she's technically not really bad, I guess. She just wants revenge on Darth Vader, I guess. That's what it's really about. Either that or he got to her, like his words got to her or something. I don't know. But she no longer wants to kill Obi-Wan. She just wants to kill Vader. And it's kind of like, so what? She's been playing this whole time. She's met Vader before. She could have killed him right then and there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm guessing his words. So I'm guessing maybe she did turn evil. But I'm guessing his words kind of like made her see the light. Made you see like, hey, you're hating on the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? Like you should be hating him the entire time. He's the one who murdered your friends and everything. And so this whole, if he did turn her... It happened too quick, and this is why this this show needs more episodes. So she leaves him in the room with some guards, so Vader can get to him. She tells Vader, "There he is in there." Vader goes in there, and we, he's like gone. Guards are not down, um, incapacitated. He's running, and we see Vader's walking towards Obi Wan. I love the way Vader walks. He has a certain like swagger to the way he walks, and that cape just like shakes and shimmies back and forth. So he's getting everybody on like you know the um the ship so they can leave. Now let's get back to Leia. Her little droid is trying to attack her, so she grabs her and she's like, "Hey, what's wrong? Why are you doing this?" Blah blah blah. And within a couple of seconds, she realizes what's wrong and she's just looking around the droid and she sees a chip on it, removes it, and boom, it's good again. That happened too fast. She ain't that smart. <laughs> she ain't that smart. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> getting annoying now. <laughs> she ain't that smart <laughs> to figure that out within a couple of seconds. So anyway, she drops down. Obi-Wan's happy. They get on like the ship. And they're getting ready to leave. Well, in comes the man. Now, Vader did something I wanted to see him do in Rogue One. Remember at the very, 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 very end, that really cool scene where he just like busts through like all the guards and he's just whooping on them and everything. The ship got away. I'm all like, why didn't he use the force to burn it down and rip it apart? Well, guess what? He does it in this episode. He uses the force and he brings that ship back and he just rips it apart. Well, there's a teeny tiny ship that's, um, that he didn't see and it flies off with the people. And where was this ship? Because I didn't see it. But basically he's pissed. <laughs> but he lets it get away and everything. And so then he's just there and like, you know, he's waiting. 
And then all of a sudden, here comes Reva with her lightsaber trying to kill Vader. Now, of course, the man can sense her and everything. And he's all like, Obi-Wan was wise to like turn you, against, turn you against me or send you after me, something like that. So she's like, you know, fighting him with the lightsaber. He's just like ducking. He, he doesn't even have his lightsaber out. He's like, he's, he's like um anderson sylvia just like ducking in and weaving and all kind of stuff and it reminds me of what you know what's his name said how you gonna fight without a weapon and then that training montage so then after um after a while i, I, I forget exactly what happens i think either he does take his lightsaber out or he takes hers oh no, no i remember he takes her because she's able to have a dual one so he takes hers and then he breaks it and then he gives her one they fight a little bit and then boom he like stabs her and everything and as he stabs her she's having images of when anakin stabbed her friends and killed them and stuff then so i'm thinking okay she's dead now you know what i'm saying like that was kind of pointless in her little turn to the good side or whatever it is she's doing then all of a sudden the grand inquisitor comes in alive I'm just like, how? You die, dude. <laughs> so death has no meaning in this show. And so he's being smug and taking his little badge back. And they leave. They're just going to leave her to die, thinking she's going to die. But does that ever work in Star Wars? This is the third time and nobody's died. So <laughs> she sees the little, little chip thing where um, Leia's adoptive dad um is basically spilling the beans on everything uh that message he gave obi-wan about like luke and owen and all this other stuff so then we see little luke sleep in his bed so what is she gonna do is she gonna help save him is she gonna help protect him is she gonna use him to draw out like maybe um uh, vader or something because he's not supposed to know about him and technically Layla, technically, isn't she not supposed to know about Obi-Wan? So how does she not remember him in the New Hope? But then again, she'd be calling him Ben in Obi-Wan Kenobi series, so and he gets older, so who knows, to tell you the truth, you know? That's why I hate prequels. They can screw up continuity and stuff. But for the most part, yeah, it was an okay episode. It had a lot going for it. It's just it just felt lackluster. Like it was kind of like, why did this happen? You're too smart for that. Like, why are you turning all of a sudden? And like, why did you sacrifice yourself? And so it was just kind of, it was just kind of like lackluster a little bit, you know? Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.